Welcome back, guys. It's Athlete's Edge, episode 11 already at Pure Vita Labs. And find us on pvl.com uh, at Pure Vita Labs on social. Uh, today, a special episode. I'm also uh, joining me as co host. This is truly a national event because Rob is at head office in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm here in Toronto. Our guest is in Kitchener, but Rob Leone is our head of athlete relations and joining us today. Um, and uh, a little segue, this is episode 11, number 11, love him or hate him. Uh, Mark Messi was my favorite hockey player, so I don't care if you don't like him, Rob, but he was my, he was my man. And this segues us into hockey. We're actually uh, really lucky to have a, a relatively new PVL athlete uh, with us today, but a, a truly a rising champion and amazing. Um, we have Lauren Gable of the Canadian National Women's Hockey Team. Clarkson University. I mean, the, some of the uh, things and the milestones you've already achieved, Lauren, and, you know, we can go through them, some of them later, but it, I mean, it's truly amazing. So welcome to Athlete's Edge. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. So, um, Lauren, it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I, I was looking into some of your, you know, looked at some previous interviews and things like that. And it's amazing with all you've accomplished and the sport that you're playing that really you didn't even like skating when you first uh, when you first tried it as a kid with, with your father. Is that true? That is true. Yeah, I went out um, to fundamentals. My parents coached fundamentals um, twice a week and went out and didn't like it, got off the ice and said, I'm never going skating again. And then the following week came along and my dad said, do you want to come out? And I said, sure. So um, went back out and loved hockey you made, ever since. You gave you gave it a try uh, the second time, and that was that I was did. the winner. You know, it makes yeah. me think we we always um, you know it, we'd like to get the background of you know our athletes, how you got there. But it it, it seems to be um, just a, an ongoing story. And you know, with the passing of Walter Gretzky, uh, you know, a few weeks back, sadly, the ultimate hockey dad. I mean, everyone you know, like the, the sacrifice, everything for that kid to get where he was. Tell us a little bit about, about your journey from, from Kitchener and maybe that, you know, after that second time you stepped on the ice, there was no looking back, but give us a little insight on that. Uh, yeah, it, I started playing hockey when I was four years old. Um, I grew up playing boys AAA hockey in Kitchener for the Kitchener Junior Rangers. And then I went on to play uh, for the Waterloo Ravens for the girls team. And yeah. I always, always played up a year. So um I was major bantam and then I just jumped right into midget. And then from there I played in the PWHL, which is the provincial women's hockey league. Uh, I played for the Kitchener Rangers and then transferred over to Toronto arrows. And then my final grade 12 year, I was with the Oakville Hornets. So I've been all over the map, but um, every single place that I played at and every organization has obviously helped me develop and helped me get to where I am today. So forever grateful for that for sure. Amazing. Um, Lauren, walk us through the, the recruiting process for Clarkson. How did you get scouted? How did you, like, what was your contact with the universities before you decided to land at Clarkson? Yeah, I, it was actually pretty, like, overwhelming for me. Um, I had, I think, like, over 30 schools, like, offering me a scholarship. So, you know, being, like, that young, like, in grade 10, 11, just, like, kind of sort of getting all these, like, emails and and wanting coaches to talk to you and stuff. It was like really like, it was just a lot to handle. And um, I went on uh, uh, school tours uh, when I was 16. Um, so I was actually, I was kind of bummed about it because obviously here you have to be 16 to get your G1, which is your driver's license. Right. And I was away <laughs> for that. So I was really disappointed, but it was fine because I got to visit schools and Clarkson was my second last stop. Um, I was supposed to go Clarkson then St. Lawrence and just skip St. Lawrence. And um, when I went to Clarkson, like I knew that this was like the school that I wanted to go to. Um, everyone was so welcoming. People were just so, so nice. And it was nice because it is a smaller school. Um, I think like 4,000 kids. Um, and it's also in like a village. Like it's, it's not even like, I don't even consider it a city, um, a town, <laughs> but yeah. Um, everyone knew each other and just like the whole atmosphere around um, what Clarkson has to offer was like really amazing. And it also had my program, which was communications and media design. And um, that definitely has helped me um, to this day, um, obviously communicating with people because I'm a little shy at first, but um, definitely helped me in that aspect. But 
Uh, I also didn't, I didn't even choose Clarkson because they won a national championship in 2014. I literally was just focusing on um, schooling and where I wanted to be. Obviously five hours from home was ideal. So my parents and friends and family could come and watch too. But I think that's probably the main reason why I chose Clarkson and obviously forever grateful to be a Golden Knight. Um, Definitely a lot of team accomplishments that has happened at that school and continues to happen, which is, is really great. Yeah, yeah, we're that, seeing that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. A lot of accomplishments and congratulations. When you, Thank when you. you. When you look at, uh, you know, and Lauren has a, actually has a, a, a website, laurengable.com. <clears throat> you, you see the accomplishments, Lauren. And I mean, two, two Patty uh, Kazmaier Memorial Awards. That's the top female athlete, correct? In, um, in the NCAA? Yes. So I was a uh, top three finalist in 2018 top three finalists in 2019 and then that's when um i was the finalist in 2019 right and two uh two ncaa division one championships and then i mean it, the the woman's hockey record books there have just been destroyed <laughs> by, by lauren gable i mean i wonder if you if i ask you how many goals uh you had in a record season how many goals in a career do you know all these stats all these i mean this is like gretzky's uh, record book here um, <laughs> I actually do. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, your own stats. I love that. Yeah. Um, my junior year was my best year. Um, I mean, senior year was, was great as well, but I did miss two games cause I went to the four nations with, um, team Canada. Uh, but I had 75 points and I had 38 goals that year. Um, my senior year, I had 69 points and I had 40 goals. So I had a goal per game. Amazing. um so yeah yeah that's fantastic <laughs> and then the jump and then the jump when did you join the um the canadian national program i joined in 2018 so that was starting my senior year i was invited to uh the f- september camp so it's like the tryout camp the fall festival and then i was named to the four nations team uh which was in saskatoon i believe and um, from there, I was selected to the world championship team um, in 2019, which took place in April in Espo, Finland. And honestly, like, it was, it was just an amazing experience. You know, being named to the Four Nations team was, was really unbelievable. But then being named to the world championship team, I was at a loss for words. I was so excited, um, literally speechless on the phone when I got the phone call. But um, always an honor to, to put that jersey over your head and be a part of something that's so much bigger than yourself and representing your country on the world stage is, is truly amazing. And I honestly don't think that feeling will ever get old either. Yeah. And I guess, uh, uh an Olympics in your, in your sights, you, you know, I mean, putting the, putting the, uh, the Canadian flag on representing your country. I mean, it must be an you know, unbelievable honor, different, different feeling than a, a national championship. I would, I would guess, but, yeah. um, you know, do you, do you relish that day of maybe getting into the Olympics one day and, and getting through that experience? Yeah, um, my sights are set on um, Beijing 2022 Winter Olympics. Uh, obviously, taking it day by day and seeing where it, where it goes and obviously, you know, developing my skills more and more on and off the ice and becoming a well-rounded athlete and really, you know, diving in, focusing on strength, conditioning, on ice, nutrition, um, sleep, recovery, like all that stuff will, will help in the end. And, um, like I said, like, obviously you have to take it day by day. Can't look too much in the future. Yeah. Obviously can't look in the past, but, um, you know, that's, that's my goal. And that's obviously been a dream since I was a little kid. So, um, accomplishing that would be uh, truly amazing. And <laughs> obviously it would be speechless as well, but, um, yeah, you know, just focusing day by day and seeing where it takes me. Yeah, and in the near future, in April, I guess you start your camp for the worlds that are taking place in Nova Scotia, right? That's correct, yes. When when are the worlds in Nova Scotia starting? May 6th to 16th. That's great. I'm glad that they, through all this craziness and COVID and all this stuff, that they're actually yeah. letting that go forward. That's amazing. Yeah, for sure. Hey, uh, Lauren, you talk about, um, you know, you hit something on the head there and obviously why, you know, why we're involved as one of your sponsors, your nutrition. Um, what are your thoughts though, overall? I mean, you know, I was talking with Rob before we got on the call here and it, it kind of used to be, you know, and I'm old, Rob's old, <laughs> but, but it used to sort of be the Canadian kid 
summer played, you know, soccer or baseball, then they played hockey and then they kind of chose and there was a, an off season. It just seems like now um, they're the, the pace, the amount of camps, the training, the on ice, the off ice, like there doesn't seem to be rest or, or a pace. I mean, how do you look at that pace? Um, and is there, you know, is there a need for more rest? And, you know, we can talk about your nutrition and, and things like that after, but what's your, what's your thoughts on, on that? And, you know, kids today growing up playing all this hockey nonstop. Yeah, honestly, when I grow, grew up, um, when I was a kid, I obviously enjoyed hockey a lot. And I did play spring hockey and kind of sort of dialed it down throughout the summer, uh, just because it was the off season. I played soccer a bit, um, tried different sports. And um, the after, like, probably like, when I turned like 16, I just focused on hockey through like all throughout like the whole year um didn't really take a break but it is off season so you're not on the ice as much so every chance you get um you know you gotta work 100 percent. and the way you practice is the way you're gonna play and that obviously makes you get get better and um so obviously since COVID started it's been a little different we have been on the ice like two three times a week um haven't played games really yeah. um only at our camps uh so it's it's way different and um it's hard to get into like a rhythm in the gym because um, you have camps, you have to quarantine for a week before you have to yeah. quarantine after. And it's just like, it's, it's a huge thing. So um, this year has definitely been a challenge, but I think, you know, every single person on the team and every single one of my teammates is, um, you know, kind of just push through it and um, whatever we're given, we just kind of take and every opportunity, opportunity, every chance we get to play a game, um, it's 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 really special uh just because we hadn't played in 11 months and our first camp was in january so it was it was a little confusing on Shocked the ice but the system, yeah. <laughs> yes, i saw you on, i saw a clip of you on tsn and, and uh, the tsn commentator gave you a very very glowing um review saying you're the next one you're the next one to look out for you're the future of team canada and that's amazing can you walk us through one of your days, your training days, what you do when you get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night, what is your training day looking like and consist of? Right now I wake up at seven, um, eat some breakfast, take my dog out. Uh, at eight o'clock I'll head into the gym, spend an hour, hour and a half, depending on um, that day, like what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, I'll get home. And I will take the dogs for a walk. I have two dogs. Um, <laughs> you got to spread the walk, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, after my workout, though, I'll have obviously a, a pro or a plant pro um, vegan protein shake from PVL and um, get back, walk the dogs, eat some lunch. Um, you know, honestly, like right now, it's just a little different. Some days I'll have ice, some days I won't. So I'll go to the rink which is usually in Oakville. So that's a 45 minute drive there and back. So that obviously takes up a huge part of my day as well. Yeah. Um, but really got to focus on like nutrition of like what you're eating throughout the day. Um, when you're gone, you got to bring snacks on the road with you. Um, usually in the morning, I'll drink my BCAs and then at night I'll drink the vit uh, vitamin C with the glutamine. Great. Um, huge fan of that, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's great. It's like tang. Tastes like tang. So we tastes like tang. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much like a day in the life of me you, right now. Um, definitely different with COVID, but um, yeah. you know, just working with what I got. But yeah. yeah. You mentioned um you mentioned plant pro. Is that um are you flexitarian? Do you do you do you like are you vegan or is that just sort of what you prefer in terms of nutrition? I am dairy free. Okay, and interesting. Yeah, also gluten free as well. So, um, is that uh, related to you for inflammation? Like, as the coaches kind of speak to you, you do hear about that occasionally. People, I mean, there is gastrointestinal, you know, I know the plant, a lot of people, it's friendlier for their stomach, but I think for athletes, you hear quite a bit of dairy free. Yeah, a lot of athletes do go dairy free. Um, I'm not dairy free by choice, I'm only okay. gluten free by choice. I'm like severely allergic to dairy. Sure. Um, but honestly, I tried like other protein powders before I tried PVL and they were all so chalky and like didn't taste great. Taste, taste then, like your front lawn after you've mowed it. Yeah. And then I tried the uh, plant pro and I was like, okay, this is good. So good. obviously like a huge fan of that. And 
honored to be with you guys and be partnered and sponsored with you guys. So Rob, Rob mentioned, uh, you know, I know he, he, he's giving you some advice and stuff, but I mean that you're, you're probably, you said probably burning about 4,000 calories a day. I mean, you've actually calculated that. I mean, is it a problem keeping body weight on and keeping energy? Uh, yeah. Like some days I'll go through the day and I'm like literally not hungry at all. Um, yeah. which I mean, isn't really good. <laughs> no, <laughs> you want to be feeding the machine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't really eat when you're not hungry. Um, it's not like you're going to like force yourself to eat either. So I try to eat like little snacks throughout the day and, um, get my nutrition that way, split up my meals a bit. Um, I haven't like ever since I was a kid, like I've never been like a huge, like sit down and eat a full meal right. kind of sort of person. So I've always had to split up meals and snacks throughout the day just to keep, keep going and keep my energy levels up. But, um, yeah, I think like, obviously nutrition is like a huge part of, of, who I am and like where I want to go. And it's obviously going to help me in a positive way. And it has yeah. helped me in a positive way too. Good. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, if you had to pick, you know, you hear this question all the time, but you're so young. It's amazing. Like, is there a, a moment to date of your career that is like the, or is it a, is it a blend of a few different ones? I think it's a blend of a few different ones. Yeah. Um, going into Clarkson, my, like graduating my class was the most winningest class at Clarkson, uh, four frozen fours, um, right. and then two national champion championships back to back. And honestly, I never thought that I'd win one national championship, let alone two. And those be back to back. It was an unbelievable feeling. And honestly, to this day, I still remember raising that trophy over yeah. my head and, um, you know, just the big celebration you have with your team after and, uh, weeks, weeks after that, um, definitely amazing. And it just shows like all the hard work that you put in throughout the year. Um, you know, hard work pays off and, you know, you got to work 150% in order to be, um, the best. And obviously that's what, that's what we did. And that's what our focus was throughout our four years when I was there. Um, and then obviously another one, uh, Patty Kazmar Memorial Award in 2019, um, hearing my name being called was yeah, amazing. unbelievable. Um, obviously teared up uh because patty just you know being compared to her is is truly amazing and um and then another one obviously representing canada and playing on the world stage like i said it's it's an honor to be a part of something that's so much bigger than yourself but i think those would probably be a few highlights of my career that are obviously unforgettable and something that um i'll always remember now you're also a member of the the brand new professional professional women's hockey league too. Like talk to us a little bit about that. How's that going and what's going on with COVID and this is year two, I think, correct? Yeah, it's year two. Um, I'm on team Sonnet in Toronto. So we have five uh, PWHPA hubs. There's one in Calgary, Montreal, Toronto, Minnesota, and New Hampshire. So um, the U S teams have been competing. They're going to be going to their third Dream Gap Tour is what we call them. Um, you know, obviously, if kids can see it, they can be it. So um, that's kind of sort of why we call it the Dream Gap Tour. Yeah. Um, we're dreaming of a professional league and something that, you know, little girls can look up to and, and want to look forward to playing in. Um, we have Chicago Blackhawks, New York Rangers, um, St. Louis, um, all on our side. Oh, Toronto Maple Leafs as well. So um, we're kind of sort of going around to like all these NHL ranks and just playing games. And it's kind of cool. Um, I mean, for the Americans, because we haven't had any of them yet, but um, it, it's cool to watch. And it's, it's cool to see like how women's hockey has grown and, and the objective that we're trying to accomplish with the PWHPA is, is truly amazing. Like you see all these little girls come to our games, like the first year with the PWHPA and um bringing all these signs like for the game, like all this stuff, like it's truly amazing because obviously they want to be us one day. And when I was younger, I looked up to a lot of women pl players mm -hmm. as well. So, um, you know, just kind of sort of being in their shoes now um, is, is totally amazing. Who was your inspiration growing up? Who did you look up to? I looked up to on the woman's side, Megan Augusta and on the men's side, Sidney Crosby. Yeah. It's a kid. There you go. Is a uh, kid. Lauren is a, uh, is women's hockey finally getting its due? I mean, I, I remember, I mean, even though the last 10 years, I mean, watching the U S play Canada and 
and all of these things, uh, you know, is, is it finally kind of getting the recognition, these, these le new leagues expanding? Um, you can maybe talk a little bit about the Canada Fund, but um, there's, there's a lot of interesting things happening there. Are you, is, is it finally getting its due that uh, it's, it's been it's kind of overdue, you know, the attention? Yeah, it's definitely overdue. Um, I think it is getting more and more attention, especially gaining NHL teams um, and, you know, allowing us to participate and play at their rinks. Um, obviously getting more like broadcasting sponsors and, sure. and more sponsors in general. Um, we have secret deodorant, which is a huge one. Mm -hmm. Um, Adidas, BioSteel, wow. all of those people, um, Ooh. and organizing. Who steel? Who what? <laughs> but we know them. They're a good company. We, we could be nice. Yeah. <laughs> a Canadian company. Yeah, they know they are. And they're big in hockey. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, but you know, just a lot of of sponsors and organizations that are willing to to help us out and help us try to get to the next level is is amazing to see like all of the hard work and um everything that we've accomplished thus far um but i think you know seeing more and more like women like broadcasting nhl games is is yeah, definitely that's pretty cool yeah. huge like that's yeah. that's like great for women and um women's hockey too because you know we get the word out through those games as well so um, you know, it just, it, it's taken a while, but we're slowly progressing and, and getting to where we want to go. Um, obviously still going to take a bit of time, but we're definitely headed in the right direction. Cool. Do you, uh, I mean, talking about sponsors, you know, for the league, but do you want to give a shout out to some of your own, uh, sponsors? I see quite a few on your, on your website. I know Bauer's one. I mean, what kid in Canada wouldn't have liked to be with exactly. Bauer when, <laughs> but yeah, go ahead and maybe give a shout out to a couple of those things that, the Canada Fund too uh, was it one one hundred and fifty women's one hundred and fifty as well was yeah one hundred and fifty cool women yeah. um so that I literally got a phone call and said that I'm a recipient of the Can Fund one hundred and fifty women um, okay. award um so they chose one hundred and fifty women um to give this this uh, to and I was obviously honored and still am to to be one of the recipients um you know it's, it helps you in the long run. It helps you with, if you're paying rent, it helps you with, with gas, sure. with, with everything like that. So it's truly amazing to, to get that phone call and, and hear, hear what she had to say. Um, and then we have, um, you guys, obviously PVL, um, love you guys. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Um, great company, great people, great products. And then I also have Under Armour, which is a newly, uh, a new sponsorship, um, great. I with them in, January, February of this year. Um, and then I just signed with Bauer this month, um, which honestly, like I was like That's so crazy. excited, like yeah. literally speechless. Like I had a smile on my face, grinning ear to ear. And um, I've used Bauer ever since I was a little kid. So just growing up and That's saying, like, I want to be sponsored by Bauer, like so yeah. cool. Like, and it's then the it finally happens. Yeah. It's the equivalent of a basketball player getting signed by Jordan Brand. Yeah, Jordan. it really yeah. is. Or yeah, Nike Jordan, yeah. Air Jordan. Yeah, so for yeah, sure. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, Lauren, we're going to uh, we usually end our segment here, and I mean, we could we could talk further, but we we like to to pull a little personality out of our guests. So we 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 do something that we finish off here called rapid fire. All you have to do is answer what comes to mind, give us a little insight, and um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so. I here we I feel go. Like I'm gonna be really bad at this, but okay. Well, no, it's all opinion. It's all opinion, but we get some some good answers here. So, sushi or pizza? If you had to choose, pizza. Pizza right away. Xbox or PlayStation? PlayStation. At a girl. Gretzky or Lemieux? Gretzky. Okay. Jordan or LeBron? LeBron. Oh, that's our second level. It makes sense. Younger generation. Your favorite yeah. movie? Oh. Goodness, guys. Come on. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a hard one. You know, get stumped on that one. Honestly, like, I don't really feel like I have a favorite movie. Yeah. But probably Miracle on Ice. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Our last uh, Shy Ross from the Edmonton Eskimos picked the Mighty Ducks as his favorite. But, like, it's funny. We were getting those, those kind of movies. How about this one? I said, Hot Dog a Sandwich. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Salty or sweet? Is our last one? Sweet. <laughs> oh, okay. I got one. I got one. I got there one. Here's, go. a, here, here's a big controversial one. 
does pineapple go on pizza? Oh. No. I kind of no. like, okay, anyway, I won't say. Yeah, I, <laughs> I like, get you it. Against I like the Hawaiian. I like the Hawaiian pizza. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lauren, listen, uh, you know, short interview today. We, we would love to have you on again. We wish you the best. We're, we're very happy that we can help, um, you know, fuel your day-to-day, help you recover. You have the work ethic, but, um, you know, we're, we're glad to be able to provide the supplements. So, you know, thank you for being part of uh, Team PVL and thanks for jumping on the uh, podcast today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me and obviously supporting me throughout my journey and every single day. I really appreciate it. All right. Until next time, be safe, keep well, your friends at PVL.